once again, Pathways. Wow, it's good to be with you guys. Again, two weeks in a row, I'm hanging out here with the big people. Normally, I, I'm the children's ministries pastor here, and um, I uh, typically am hanging out in the kids' environments. And so um, I, I thought today we could just kind of continue a conversation about the, the life of David as we follow uh, the leader, right? And uh, our leader, but uh, this entire series uh, that we're, that we're uh, talking about what it looks like for us to, to study some of the greatest leaders ever in the Bible and how we can glean some, some stuff from them, both good and bad, and in hopes that we can point people to Jesus with our leadership and uh, point people to Jesus to ultimately bring his, his name fame. And so today I want, us to, uh, I want us to title this talk, Living the Dream. How many of y'all are living the dream? Come on, let me see your hands just like that. Some of you are faking it right now, aren't you? You know what I mean, right? Do you remember when you were a little kid and you were dreaming about, you know, your dream job? Or when you were like a little kid and you were, you were dreaming about what you, what you would be when you grew up, right? I was, I was thinking about that this, this week, and, and no, believe it or not, my dream job was not to become a pastor. Um, that was actually my backup plan, to be honest. Uh, my, my, my dream job was, I can remember at the earliest of ages, of one day playing in the NBA, right? And boys, you know what I'm talking about, guys. You know what I'm, from the youngest of ages, some of us, we've, we dreamt that. I remember shooting the rock, as kids call it today. We didn't call it that back then, right? But I remember shooting the rock in my driveway and dreaming of the, the day of one day being a part of... Uh, some of the greatest teams. In my humble opinion, the greatest team ever to assemble on the court of basketball. I remember dreaming of being a part of the 1992 dream team. How many remember that team? Come on, put your hands up like this. Some of you are, yeah. I remember dreaming of literally what it would be like. You know where I'm going? What it, what it would be like to actually be like, like Mike, right? Like Michael, Michael Jordan, right? There he is, number nine. And Dreaming of what it would be like to take the step back and take the game-winning shot of the NBA Finals or the, or, the, or the gold medal game of the Olympics. Well, the last several weeks in our series, we've been watching and learning as God is forming his dream team through Samuel. Ultimately, God's dream through Hannah to Samuel, and then the rest is history, right? And, and God's dream team has been forming... And, 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 and it, it's about to come to pass in the life of the future king of Israel, King David, right? Like last week, if you were here, we looked at the life of, of David and as he was prepared in the pasture, right? He was prepared in the pasture to, to ultimately be a, be a man after what? God's own heart. How many want to be a man or woman after God's own heart? I know I do. And this week I've been thinking about even what, I've, what, I, what I said. We learned that, that his, his preparation ultimately promoted him to, to the palace, right, to be the next king of Israel. And if you were here last week, we, 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 we learned together. But I want us to dive a little deeper into the story of, of David today. And uh, I want us to see how God's dream for David led him to the battlefield, to, to take down a, a giant. You see, David was a, was a key player in, in, in God's dream team. But before he was promoted to the palace, I'd like to suggest that he used some of his preparation time to take down a giant standing in the way, a, a giant named Goliath. Many of you have probably heard this story many, many times throughout your life. You've heard it in church. And, and this story is even kind of unfolded in all different types of our culture, not just within the church. The story is found in 1 Samuel 17. And we're going to go there today. If you have a Bible, I want you to find your Bible, find your mobile device. It'll be on the screens as well. 1 Samuel 17. We're going to go there. But I thought before we go there, I thought we could literally go there for a few moments. I thought we could maybe go there and see what it might have been like for David and the rest of the people of Israel as the, as the giant Goliath came forth. Can we go there for a few moments? Let's watch this.
It's an epic, uh, epic story that lives on today in our lives. And so today, I want us to break apart this story a little bit. I want us to go to 1 Samuel 17 today. And I want, to, I want us to break apart portions of this story and recognize that God may have to, may have to, that, that God may have to take down some emotional giants in our life today. Before we can move forward with God's dream in our life, just like he did for David. I want us to take a look at this story and look at some of the, some of the emotional giants that, that, that David had to take down before he could conquer the physical giant, Goliath. And then at the end of my talk, I want us to give us, I want to kind of just give us three action steps to, to take down these, these emotional giants that could negatively affect our uh, our dream that God has placed in our, in our hearts. And so if you're taking notes today, the first emotional giant I want us to discuss together, I want us to talk about, is the, is the emotional giant of discouragement. Did you see it in, in that video? I want us to see it today in, 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 the, in the Bible. Have you ever felt discouraged on your way to living out a dream, whether it was a dream for your kids or a dream for something in your, in your work life or your personal life? You see, we see in our text today that Goliath literally had, had created a climate of fear in Israel. And, and, and everybody had decided already that we're going we're gonna to lose this battle and, and nobody can, can beat this Goliath guy. I mean, let's take a look at 1 Samuel today and let's, let's try to get a vibe of what was going on there today and, and study it a little bit. You see, they were acting defeated before the battle even began. Because of discouragement. Let's, let's go to verse 8 of 1 Samuel 17, and let's read a part of this story. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, talking about Goliath here, Why have you come out to draw up for the battle? Am I not a Philistine, and, you, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. Verse 9. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So guys, notice the situation today. They're all demoralized. They're, they're all gripped with anxiety. They're they're terrified. They're most likely traumatized because of this, this, this giant and the atmosphere that, that, that's, that's all around them. They, they, they feel hopeless. One translation of the Bible actually says they were frightened. They couldn't do anything. They were so frightened. They couldn't do anything. So they're discouraged. They're, 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 they're all convincing each other that, that they're going to go down, right, because they're all filled with, with fear. You ever felt that way? Then David steps onto the scene in the story. We're going to go there in a little bit. But David steps there, and he's like, why, why is everybody freaking out? I'll do it. I'll do it. D David didn't let discouragement keep him from God's dream. He didn't, he, didn't let the, he didn't let the scaredy cats all around him get to him. Pathway, sometimes when we're chasing God's dream for our life, we need a, we need a fresh set of eyes don't we? Sometimes you need a, a shepherd from the pasture, right? A pasture that's been prepared in the pasture that says, I got this. With God's help, I got it. Sometimes you need someone to step into your life when you're chasing a dream and say, we don't need to be discouraged here, huh? I know things look a little bit bleak here, but, but, but we got this. But what do the people of Israel do? They practically given up, right? They, they, why had they given up? Do you know? Like, why had they gotten so discouraged from this one giant? The answer is they were listening to the wrong voice. You know? They, they were listening to this guy named Goliath every single day, right? Let's look at it in verse 16. What does it say? It says, for 40 days the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. It's no wonder they got discouraged, right? Like day after day, they're listening to this guy, right? Here's my question for us today. What voices 
are we listening to that we shouldn't be? Guys, sometimes we need a fresh voice. Sometimes we need a... We need, a, we, need a kid, we need a kid fresh from the pasture that's been prepared with fresh eyes who obviously was being shaped after what? After God's own heart. So check it out. What does David do? He's like, this guy's nothing, right? We could take him down. It's a slam dunk. No problem, right? But as David steps onto the scene, I want us to check it out. The, the people still seemed discouraged. Let's read about it. Let's continue in verse 23. It says, As he talked with them, behold the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. The same words as before. And this time, this is what happened. And David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. They're still afraid. Can I encourage you today, guys? Can I encourage myself? Don't let the giant of discouragement cause you to flee from your dream. Don't let discouragement you have felt in the past dictate your future. Guys, when when discouragement takes over our head and our heart, it can begin to cripple us with fear, just like it did for the men of Israel that day. It can cause us to run from our dream, just like it did from the men of Israel. Guys, let's go ahead and take captive the thoughts and the voices that have filled our mind, and let's take down the giant of of discouragement in our life. Because this giant wants to take us out on our way to live the dream that God has for us. It's the emotional giant of discouragement. The The second giant I want us to talk about today is the giant of disapproval. Disapproval. You ever felt disapproved of? Here's the problem, at least in my life. The reason why most of us, including me, don't don't go after our dream is we're afraid of disapproval. We're afraid of rejection, you know what I mean? Like we're afraid of what people think of us. Or we're afraid of how people view, will view our performance in our life and who we are. We want, we want everyone to be like us sometimes, don't we? I know I do. We want everyone to sort of approve of what we, we do. But guys, if, if we want to go after God's dream for our life, I promise you there's going to be naysayers in your life, right? There's going to be critics. There's going to be, there's going to be misunderstanding. You ever been there, right? There will be people who think you're not ready, right? There will be people who just, who just don't get it. I mean, in this case, in our text today, it was, it was David's own brother who questions David's motivation. Can we read about it in verse 28? David's older brother and his younger brother are talking. It says, now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why have you come down? And, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? In other words, why are you not in the pasture? Why are you here? I know your presumption and the evil of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. Let's keep reading. And David said, what have I done now? Was it not but a word? You see, David's older brother begins to disrespect his younger brother. He demeans him. He he disregards him in some ways. He, he belittles him, right? That's what we now call in our culture sibling rivalry. And many of us have been there, right, through our story of life. Do you have sibling, do you have sibling rivalry in your home today? I know I, know I do. Holy cow, yeah. It's, it's in my, I've got four kids, like, like, two, like two boys, two girls, both about 18 months apart, and you can see how it might go in my house, right? The the story lives out in my life. For whatever reason, one thinks that that they know better than the other, right? Whether it be their age or I've got more experience in this and and, or or whatever it is. But if I'm honest, my home cannot just have a little bit of sibling rivalry in it. It can have a little husband-wife rivalry in it too. And you know what I'm realizing? If I'm not careful... My words and my actions can show disapproval with my wife 
Because I may think I know what's best, or I may have a little bit more experience, or I may be the expert, or I, I may not even fully understand. And in those moments, I try to assert my, my, my husbandly leadership, you know what I mean? And it can quickly turn into a voice of, of disapproval to her. You ever been there? Guys, if we're not, if we're not careful, our good intentions can turn into a voice of disapproval and crush a dream, especially with the people that we love the most. So maybe today the, the emotion of, of disapproval is there. It's very real in your life. And it may be keeping you from living your dream. Maybe the feeling of rejection has, has literally taken the air out of your dream because of past hurts and past pain. Am I saying today you should never share your dreams with those that you love because you, they may not understand or, or ultimately they may not even approve? I'm not saying that at all. But I would actually encourage you to share your dreams, especially with the people that love you the most. But where do we go to find our ultimate approval? God, right? You see, the question today is not who do others think we are. The question is, who does God think you are? Guys, if you're going to take that dream and you go for it, you may be misjudged, you may be misinterpreted, you, you may be misunderstood. But we have to decide for ourselves what is more important to us, the approval of other people or the approval of our loving Heavenly Father God. Guys, I'm on a journey learning that the approval of God is more important to me than the approval of other people or even the approval of myself. You see, it's not my job. It's, not, it's none of my business what other people think of me. It's my business what God thinks of me. And I want to tell you today that God approves of you and God approves of me. That's the truth. So we've talked about the emotional giant of discouragement, of disapproval, and finally today, the third giant I want us to tackle is the tackle of, is the giant of doubt. Doubt. Guys, on our way to living the dream, you probably are asking questions, like I've asked over the years. Like, can I even do this? Like, am I capable of this? Can I be the godly parent that God has called me to be? Can I even be a pastor? Am I up to the task? Can I actually do what, what God is asking me to do? Has anybody ever doubted you? Like in, like in David's case, it was actually the, the expert that doubted his ability, right? There was, there was nobody that, that, was, that was greater at, 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 at a greater expert on war than King Saul. Like King Saul had been in war, in battle his entire life. And when King Saul hears that this little shepherd guy, this little kid, is willing to take on the giant that has literally paralyzed the nation of Israel, he, he, he invites David to come to see him in the palace. Can, can we go there? David, David goes to see King Saul. And let's, let's, find, let's read about it in verse 32. It says, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. In other words, David's like, don't worry about a thing, king. Right? I got it. I'll, I'll, fight, I'll fight the giant. You see, David had no doubt. He, he took down the giant of doubt before he took down the giant named Goliath. Let me just stop here for a moment. You know, confidence in God sometimes... Can, can, can be misinterpreted as cockiness by other people. You know what I mean? You ever met a confident person that you're like, ooh, are they arrogant or what? Right? A lot of people might think a person is cocky or arrogant when, when they're just a person of faith, of big faith, of strong faith. You see, it's not that they think they can do it. It's, it's that they know God can do it through them. That's confidence in God. That's what we're seeing here in David. That's not cockiness. David says, don't worry about it, king. I'll, I'll fight it. Saul says, don't be ridiculous, right? He's like, Let, let's read about it in verse 33. It says what? It says, then Saul said to David, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. 
for you are but a youth. And he's been a man of war from his youth. Now that's enough to start making you doubt a little bit, right? Guys, I'm not suggesting today that we shouldn't listen to the experts, because we should, right? We should get good, godly, sound advice, but not at the expense of our God-given dream. Guys, can you imagine if David would have let self-doubt win in, this, in his life in this moment? Can you imagine if David would have walked away from this part of God's dream for his life? If, if, if David would have, would have let, the, let the giant called self-doubt win, I'm pretty confident that the physical giant, Goliath, would have also won. Pathways, let's stand in God confidence that comes from our great God, right? And let's take down some emotional giants today that have crept into our head and into our heart. So how do we do that? What's the game plan? Let's talk about the, let's talk about the, the game plan for a little bit, okay? Okay? Now that we've named some of the opponents that are there in front of us, we've named some of the, the giants, the, the, the obstacles that are keeping us from God's dream, what's the, what's the game plan to take down these things? I want to suggest just three things really quickly. The first action step I'd like to suggest is, is this. Trust your training. Trust your training. You see, like David, we've got we've to learn to trust our training that took place in the pasture. Remember last week in the pasture, if you were here, the monotony, the obscurity, the suffering that, 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 that David felt, he began to use that to his advantage for his great God. Can we, can we go there? Let's, let's read about it in 1 Samuel. It says, but David said to Saul, this is David talking, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Let's keep reading. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. Are you, are you catching the God confidence here, guys? For he has defied the armies of the living God. Come on, let's keep going. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from, and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And check what Saul said. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Guys, David recalled his time in the pasture. That's what he's talking about there. He recalled the moments that God was, was developing him. When God was training him for, for this moment in his time. Guys, when you're given an opportunity to move toward your dream, you got to trust your training. You've got to trust those moments where it was monotonous and, and there was moments of obscurity and even suffering. we got to trust our training. I'm not just talking about physical training, but I'm talking about emotional training and, and spiritual training, right? The training of your heart and, and your mind. To trust God that who he says you are you are, and it doesn't matter what the naysayers are saying, right? It doesn't matter what stands in your way. No discouragement, no disapproval, no doubt stands in the way because you know who you are. Because God told you who you are in the pasture, right? Trust your training. You're a child of the most high God. Trust your training on the way to the dream God has placed in your heart. You know, Pathway, sometimes we read this story. I know I have. Over the years, I read the story of David and Goliath, and we think it was like this momentous miracle in the life of, of David. Now, it's pretty epic. It was a, it's a great story. But we read it like it was some sort of underdog story. I know I have, and I've even talked it that way. It's not really an underdog story. I mean, yes, David was small, and David was young, right? I mean, Goliath was huge, right? Goliath was an experienced fighter, but can I suggest today that so is David? He was just trained in a different type of warfare. He knew his strength. He knew his, his advantage. You see, he wasn't trained like Goliath. He, was, he wasn't trained as, a, as an infantryman like Goliath. He was trained as, a, as an artilleryman. You know what I mean? 
Like he wasn't trained on the battlefield to, to, to fight combat hand to hand with a sword and a shield like Goliath. That's an infantryman. David was a slinger. He was, a, he was an artillery man, right? He wasn't prepared in the pasture to wear big, heavy armor and, a, and, a, and a, carry a sword and a shield. He was, he was prepared with a, with a staff and a sling. But do you see that, that Goliath most likely had no idea what was coming at him that day when he said, come at me. He was most likely ready for, a, for an infantry man, someone big and strong to fight hand in hand. That's what he was used to fighting with. But David knew who he was. He used his prep time in the pasture. He used his training time in the pasture to take advantage that day. Guys, there may be moments in your life where you've got to push through doubt and disapproval and discouragement. And we've got to trust our training. Secondly, I want us to pick up the rock. Can I encourage you to pick up the rock today? Are you seeing it? Dave, David picked up the rock, didn't he? Come on, let's go there. First Samuel 17. It, it says, then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand. Check it. He took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand. And what happened? And he approached the Philistine. This was the moment. David didn't need all the fancy armor. He just said, give me the rock. All I, all, all I need is the, the rock. Because some of us need to pick up the rock today. Maybe some of us need to get off the sideline a little bit, step out from the crowd like David, and pick up the rock and get in the game. Some of us maybe need to pick up the rock for the first time today. Some of us, maybe, need, maybe you had the rock in your hand, but you put it down. And you need, to, you need to pick it back up today and get back in the game. Come on, let's, let's pick up the rock and get in the game. You've let the giants of your life take away from your dream. And God has given you exactly what you need to get back in the game or maybe start for the very first time. It's right there in front of you. Can I tell you what it is? For David, it was right there. He just picked up the rock, Right? Some of us have given up on our dream before we even, we even started. Now, your dream may not be a dream job in the palace like David. Your dream may not be a dream promotion at your place of business. But, but, but you're, God has given you something, right? He's given you kids. He's given you a future. You know God has given you a dream to make a difference here on earth with your one and only life. And can I just say to you, for those of you that think, oh, I'm too old to dream again. No, no, no. The best really could be yet to come if you pick up the rock. God has given us an incredible tool as we look to live out God's dream for our life. We just got to pick it up. For us, it starts with the word of God. Hebrews 4.12, what does it say? For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and what? And discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's the word of God. The Bible says to take up the, 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 the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Guys, that's why chair time is so important. That's why spending time and, and, and taking time with God in his word is critical to defeating the enemy and the lies of the enemy in our life. So let's pick up the word of God together. Because like I said last week, it's the word of God that points us to the good news of the gospel. Guys, it's epic stories like, like David and Goliath in God's word that points us to the extra, extra good news of the gospel. It's the word of God 
that, that points us to the ultimate cornerstone, Jesus, that we can anchor our life to, the solid rock we have in Jesus Christ. You see, God gave David exactly what he needed that day. It was a rock and a sling. But can I suggest that it was much bigger than just stones and a sling that day? There was a bigger rock in play in David's life. And there's a bigger rock at play in our life today. It's Jesus Christ, the cornerstone that we build our life on as Jesus followers, right? I mean, just as Peter preached about it, right, in Acts chapter 4, let's read about it. This is Jesus. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you. The builders, which has become the cornerstone. Verse 12, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Guys, and just as, just as Peter preached that day, and it's recorded in Acts chapter 4, we've been singing about the solid rock for, gen, for generations, right? What does it say? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Come on, Pathways, let's pick up the rock. It's right there today. And finally, in closing today, after we pick up the rock, there's one more step. We've got to take the shot. Take the shot. What would happen if David didn't take the shot? Come on, let's read about it at the end of the story, verse 47 and 48. It says, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and what? He fell on his face to the ground. He took the shot. You ever hit a winning shot? I remember in high school, one of my greatest highlights, my claim to fame, actually, it's my only one. I hit a winning shot in the sectional playoff games my junior year. It was a highlight for me. And can you imagine what it was like that day when David took the winning shot, when the people of God watched David take the winning shot? Guys, are we ready to pick up the rock today and take the shot? Are we ready to pick up the solid rock of Jesus and take the shot today? Some of us have been given a shot in the past, and, and we let fear win, and that's okay. If that's you, if you ran away from that dream, if you ran away from, 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 from what God had for you, that's, that's okay. Because God's given you a second shot today. He's given you a third shot. In fact, he'll keep giving you a shot. But let's pick up the rock and let's take the shot. Let's trust in the training of the solid rock of Jesus Christ and take a shot with a step of faith today. A step of faith today toward the dream that God has placed in your heart. Take the shot. Take a step today. Take a step of faith toward the solid rock because guess what? Jesus already took the shot. He took care of it all on the cross, didn't he? He already took down our opponent. He already took down the enemy of our soul with the ultimate game-winning shot all the way to the cross. He took care of the victory, guys. He took care of the victory over death, hell, and the grave, and all the negative emotions that affect us so we might find eternal victory in him and live the dream. The dream God has for us, right? Can we stand to our feet all across the auditorium today as we get ready to get out of here? You see, God's dream was alive for David that day on the battlefield. And God's dream is very much alive today for you. And if God could do it for David, can he do it for us today? 
Can we dream again today? Maybe for the very first time, say, God, revive my heart so I can dream again. Some of us have let old dreams die. Pick up the rock today and take the shot. Because if God could do it through David, he could do it again through us. Do you believe that? If God could do it through David, whatever's standing in your way today, pick up the rock and take the shot. Can we stand and sing this song together? Let's do it. I'll sing with us. pray together before we leave God here we are standing on this field this playing field right here God there's a battlefield that, that, that's out there God there's there's emotions that are standing in our way God we talked about them today but we are overcomers and today we choose just as you did for David God do it again in our life today no doubt no disapproval no discouragement's gonna stand in the way because God your spirit goes with us as you anointed David that day to become the next king today your spirit is very much alive in us and through us so God I pray for your people today God as they leave from this place that no giant would stand in their way that they would take what is rightfully theirs and Jesus we would pick up you the solid rock in our life and we take the shot we take a step of faith in our neighborhoods in our homes in our businesses God by your spirit, we go, we go. We trust our training. We, we pick up the rock and we take the shot. We trust it all in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with God, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Amen.